So next, let's talk a little bit about assigning the super elevation to the corridor. So once you have all your lanes configured and all your uh, transitions have been calculated, then what you need to do is you need to go into your corridor. So generally, you're going to have your corridor in a separate file in most cases. I usually advise that you keep all these files separate from each other just for speed and processing and for work sharing purposes. It's usually a good idea to federate all your files don't usually advise people to include super and corridors together in one file. It just gets a little messy with all the graphics and everything as well. Um, so let's go over and open up the corridor for State Route 97. And we'll attach this uh, super elevation information and assign it to our corridor. Hopefully we're uh, addressing your questions as, as we're going along here. I have Holly Herring on the line. She's uh, helping me out with Q&A today, so we'll try and answer your questions as best that we can. So, okay, so in the corridor here, corridor's already been created. Super elevation has not been assigned to the corridor, applied to the corridor. So before we do that, again, I just want to go back and just mention, you know, the critical aspect of assigning super elevation to the corridor is dependent on the template that you use and how the super elevation flags are defined on each of the points inside of the template. Okay, so if your template has these super elevation flags toggled on appropriately, you will not have any issues with super elevation in your corridor. If you don't have the proper points assigned with the super elevation flag, then you're gonna run into some problems. Okay. So all my points for super elevation that are flagged are my edges of pavement and my center line for my eastbound and westbound sides of the roads. So this is our, our template for our corridor. Our super elevation flags have been set up on there and our lanes are all ready to go. Let's take a look at our reference files real quick. Okay, so here's our super for State Route 97. That's the stuff that we've defined, so you gotta make sure that's attached as a reference file. And then let's just go ahead and assign the corridor to the super elevation or the super elevation to the corridor, however you want to look at it. So let's assign it to the corridor. So I'm going to say assign to corridor. And select my super elevation section here. I'm going to locate my corridor. It's going to list all of our points there, or list our lanes and our super elevation points from the template that it finds. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and process that. Okay, so it goes ahead. Now you'll see some purple markers appear on the cross-sectional view indicating that the uh, the template has now, or the quarter has now assigned super elevation. Okay, so let's take a quick look over here in some areas. Let's do a right click. So locate station by data point. Hopefully I did this right. You can see here we've got some full super going on here. So it's working as designed. If you need to check the cross slopes for whatever reason, once again, a good handy tool that we have available at our disposal is the place horizontal temporary dimension. So if you need to check, take a look at the cross slopes between points in your cross sectional view here in your corridor, you can simply use this temporary dimension tool to review and compare the cross slopes that you have in your model here to the super elevation report that you did in the other file. Okay, so just a good way to, to check and make sure it's correctly. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.